Good morning, folks. This is Farmer John coming at you with another video. This here this morning, it is cool, it is overcast, it is fresh, but a little bit humid. There might be some scattered showers coming our way, and that's a good thing because we definitely need it. So I thought, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time outside, but I do want to do, some, do something productive. And uh, in this case, we're going to be saving some seed from our last year's uh, okra harvest. So these are okra, okra pods. I've been dried up. They've probably been uh, just sitting around on the outside, exposed to the elements uh, for about, I want to say, four months. And uh, some of them have cracked. Some of them have been pecked at by uh, pigeons and birds. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't really uh, seem to matter because uh, some seeds would still uh, make it. And um, we're going to practice. If I let the wind just go by, we're going to practice some seed selecting methods. As you may know, when you're selecting seeds from your fruit or saving seeds, you want to choose the fruits with the biggest yield. In this case, it'd be whichever is the biggest pod. And I think this one right here, this is the biggest pod. But there are some other good candidates. Like this one is slightly larger, this one's a little thicker. I have a lot to choose from. We're just going to separate, um, separate them by size, categorize them. So this is a good candidate. This one's, uh, I like the shape of this one. It's very, it's very uniform. So I might take seats from that. It's actually another good one. So we have these right here that are the biggest um, pods from the okra. And that's a good thing. We want to save seeds from those because those probably have the best chances to continue those genetics that'll produce big fruit. That's how we can uh, control the quality of our seeds is picking from the best fruit possible. So sometimes it's good to leave fruit on. And from one pot alone, we can probably get 16 seeds. So as long as one seed germinates, you can infinitely grow a uh, abundance of food vegetables and fruit as long as it germinates so we gotta you know make sure that one seed germinates but in this case since we have a surplus of all these seeds we can try different methods experiment and then have fun with um, gardening and farming right okay let's get started so this is very optional you don't really need a knife to split okra pods you can do it with scissors you can do it with your bare hands um, I'm not going to be using a knife, I have pretty strong hands, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to show off this knife really quick. Um, it's a souvenir from Dallas, Texas. Obviously not where I live, I live in Laredo, Texas, so it's definitely nice to keep uh, souvenirs around. I like this knife a lot. Anything. We have a bowl to our side so we can capture the seeds in, make sure we don't lose any. And um, we have five to choose from, so it doesn't really matter which... Uh, pod we choose first, so what I like to do is twist it up a bit, twist it both ways, loosen up the fibers a bit, and it's actually kind of tricky. Some um, some fibers will keep it together, if you just like go around pinching and pulling, you'll see what side will uh, be easiest to pull away. And once you feel a break, um, get your bowl ready, do it right over your bowl, just pull away and give it a good shake. Move on to the next gill. I think that's what you call them. These gills. Just pull away, give it a shake, right over the bowl, and they should just fall out. It's huge seeds. Oh yeah, oh, that was a ton of seeds right there. Run through your fingers. You don't absolutely have to tear the gills away. We're just exposing the inner, uh, inner sides of the pod. Then you can start pulling away to get the seeds at the bottom that are near the end of the, um, whatever that is, the tip of the pod. This is what it looks like on the inside, once you split it all up. This is actually really good. If you let this dry, continue, if you continue to let this dry, this should be good for um, kindling, to make fires. You see the inside of it. All these fibers will catch um, flame and spark. Um, well, not flame or spark, they'll uh, just burn. Pretty easy. So, it's good to know. 
Cover each scale, pull out. They'll fall out on their own. You don't have to get nitty and gritty and clean them out yourself. We'll do that once all the gills are open. Look at that, only two pods and we have a, a lot, a lot of seeds. We'll actually count to get an estimation on how many seeds can we get per pod. Um, at the top of my head, I can guess that we get about 12 seeds. If that's an understatement, I don't know. <laughs> really, there should, there's a lot more than 12 seeds. I just like to low park it. That's open, that's open, um, see, that's done as well. That's a lot of seeds. Um, in all reality, I think there are... Over 30 seeds, sorry, it took me a while. <laughs> I was actually trying uh, this time. I'm thinking there's over 30 seeds, so 15 seeds per pod amazing and it's not always like that you know depending on the size of the pod you'll get less um, some seeds will be uh, damaged or maybe they didn't develop all the way they didn't fully develop and so they might not be a good candidate to grow to uh, cast into the ground and grow from so from here we're gonna do an even further quality control method to make sure that our seed are like the best possible seed that we can grow from. This is just simply the harvesting of the seed. Now, after this, we can actually control the quality of the seed. This is just a, like a prior step before it all, is picking the best fruit that you can to get the seeds from, to harvest the seeds from. And that's partially um, part of the method <laughs> to controlling your seed quality, is picking the best fruit. And then there's another method, or another step to it, and that is actually going through the individual seed itself, looking for any damages, casting out those that have damages or cracks in them, or they're not good sized compared to the others, you know. We're gonna go pretty thorough with this, so. Let's get you at a different angle so we can get a little closer to this. Alright, what I'm doing now is going through the seeds up close and looking at, or looking for rather, damages, blemishes, um, just um, deformities in the, in the growth of the seed. Um, as you can see, I have a couple of varying seeds, some that are discolored, some that are cracked, or some that just did not uh, develop uh, fully, and we want to take those out of our seed pile just so that um, we don't have to give it a second thought when we throw these seed in the ground thinking, oh, I hope these seed will germinate or I hope these seed will actually um, survive well, your best possible chance is to have a good quality seed and this is how we control that quality to ensure that the quality is good is that we go through each seed Pick out the good stuff and pick out the bad stuff. Pick out the good stuff from the bad. It's kind of tedious, you know? but it's like very meditative for me. It's very therapeutic. I could take my time with it, and it's um, actually uh, very helpful, very soothing on the eyes because I'm looking for like, the smallest detail, the smallest blemish that'll invalidate the seed I'm going through. It's interesting to me actually how they um, end up this way, how a seed is created, you know. I wish I had uh, smaller hands though, oops, I may have lost a good one. The mosquitoes are biting me, so this is not very comfortable right now. I like to do this inside where I was protected, where I could be protected. But I'm not gonna get this one. This one's very unsatisfactory. So we might have picked out uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, wow, at least 20 seeds that are just not um, 
good standing, good quality. And that's to say that at least a pod's worth of seeds are bad. <laughs> Thinking about it now, I think uh, from each pod you can probably ha harvest over 30 seeds. <laughs> It's just so daunting. You, you wouldn't believe there's like a hundred seeds in here. I, I, you show me this, I wouldn't believe there's a hundred seeds in here. <laughs> They're not. I don't think so, at least. But, um, it's cool. It's cool. Alright, we're gonna save these seeds. I think we've, um, controlled them enough. Every time I move them around, I find a new one that's just needing to get out. Is that cold wind coming in? I think it might be storming today, tomorrow. I'll check the forecast. I don't like to though. A lot of those, um, a lot of the time they get it wrong. I think I'll check the farmer's almanac online. They're a lot more uh, informed. All right, that seems to be good. Uh, yeah, from um, two pots and a half. Good seed right here. All right. What I do with the seed, the bad seed, is I just cast them into the into the lawn. If they volunteer and grow by any chance, that'd be nice. I wouldn't mind that. So, it's a bag full of ochre seeds. Ochre seeds that'll. Can definitely last for a long time, in this bag at least. Uh, we're just waiting to be planted again for the next crop, which will be um, this fall. It's um, spring, it's mid spring. Um, we don't have enough time to grow okra again, and they're really only a fall um, it's a crop, so we're gonna really wait until then. As for the rest of these pods, I have a lot of other smaller pods here. Um, I'm gonna save the seeds from them. I'm not gonna control the quality. This will be like a backup surplus of seed. Something that I can play around with. Something that I can um, experiment with. Uh, transplanting methods, uh, direct sowing. This is where I can do my own research and do my own uh, experimentations to find out what's um, what okra, where okra likes to grow best, and um, uh, if it's tolerant to any different uh, gardening methods and um, farming techniques, actually. Yeah. The seeds in the see this one was open for a while. Um, I didn't do this, I just kind of found it open. And the seeds on the inside, after being exposed to the elements, they kind of deteriorated. So um, that's something to look forward to. Don't leave your pots open, preferably leave them um, encased and then store them away if you don't want to save the seeds immediately. I mean, they've been out here in the environment exposed for four months, months on end. See, there's a crack in here, so... Well, even the crack from that size with water getting in still left somewhat of the seeds intact. So that's good to know that uh, as long as it's not completely open or um, uh, drastically uh, open, <laughs> the seeds will be fine. Just dump out the seeds, why not? Alright. I'm gonna save the emptied pods around because uh, this might be interesting to make fire with, uh, kindling with. So you can pull the fibers away, and if it's dry enough, these will catch uh, flame, I believe. I'll test that out. It's good to know. Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me, till the next video, have a good one.